the public is weary in the aftermath of the Sword Art Online incident, which prompts the shift from VR to AR, augmented reality. One company dominates with the Ogma, the most popular peripheral used to play ordinal scale. It's like LARPing, but with a fancy headpiece, and an insanely realistic AI idol, Yuna, who everyone loves and knows her songs, yada yada, idols. Kirito gets sucked into playing by Asuna and company when Einkrad bosses begin appearing around Tokyo. One night, they join Klein in Akihabara to fight Kagechi, the samurai lord. Before the event starts, Yuna shows up to serenade the players, giving them all a buff. It's Kirito's first real activity after being stuck in bed for two years due to SAO, so he has some trouble keeping up physically, and can't RP to save his life. Asuna and Klein don't have that problem, being prolific OS players. Suddenly, a rocket veers off course, heading straight for Yuna, but a player watching from the shadows springs into action and saves her before helping out with the boss. Right before Asuna lands the final blow, she passes the mystery player, who whispers, Switch. Everyone gets a big points boost for defeating the boss, and Asuna gets an additional reward for being the event's MVP. It turns out the mystery player, Eiji, is ranked second overall. The number one spot is oddly empty. He also seems to know Asuna from SAO and calls her by her real name. The following night, Asuna joins Klein and his gang to battle another boss. Cut off from his friends, Eiji appears and starts sadistically toying with the isolated Klein. After the battle, Yuna tries to congratulate Asuna again, calling her by name this time, and Klein is nowhere to be found. On the MMO network, they find out that there's a book about SAO and what happened during the two years it was online. The book contains a detailed list of players who were trapped in SAO. The next day, Yui encourages an out-of-shape Kirito to practice sword skills in AR. When he activates ordinal scale, a girl hooded in white appears, seems to speak but not audibly, points in a direction, and then quickly disappears. Asuna shows up and confirms that Eiji was in her SAO guild, Knights of the Blood Oath, under the name Nautilus. The gang meets in Alfheim online and Yui grabs everyone's attention to announce her findings looking into ordinal scale and the reason behind the Aincrad boss cameos. By overlaying a map of SAO dungeons on top of that of Tokyo, she found they overlap with the recent appearances of the bosses. She uses this information to predict where the next boss events will be, and they're all concerned about Klein's absence. Elsewhere, Eiji talks with Yuna while crossing off names in his copy of the SAO book. That night, Kirito is paid a quick visit by the hooded virtual girl again, who's again super cryptic, and points again, and disappears again. Kirito then receives a call from Aegil, who breaks the news about Klein's hospitalization. Meanwhile, Asuna, Silica, and Liz attend another boss event. Eiji and Yuna are there again. He talks to Asuna and confirms his identity before he reverts back to cracked out psychopath mode. Kirito shows up while the battle is underway just in time to watch Silica get straight up pranked when Pina, her pet from ALO, appears. But it's not Pina, and it quickly morphs into another powerful boss from the 91st floor. Eiji pushes Silica to the ground and stands there waiting to watch her get finished off, but Asuna jumps in and protects her, taking the attack herself. This triggers a flash of her memories from SAO while a drone flies by and collects a glowing sphere from Asuna's Ogma. Completely oblivious to all of the weirdness of what just happened, Yuna bids farewell to Asuna and leaves. The hooded girl watches them from a distance. Kirito drops Asuna off at home. Beginning to forget her time in SAO, she asks him about how they first met. Later that night, she realizes how serious the gap in her memory is contacts Kirito to meet up in ALO and admits her memory loss. The next day, they go to the hospital, where they learn that many SAO survivors have been affected by memory loss, presumably due to some unknown function of the Ogma. Later, they tour Einkrad, as it's recreated in ALO, but nothing jogs her memory. She breaks down in their cabin and tells Kirito that she's afraid of losing him and their memories together. Elsewhere, 
Eiji strokes his own ego about how he's better at AR than the two best SAO players. Kirito visits Klein, who's still in the hospital with a mangled arm and suffering the same kind of amnesia as Asuna. He decides to take matters into his own hands and attend more events to figure out what's going on. He warns his friends not to play OS until he solves the mystery. Despite his warning, Sinon shows up at the next boss fight. She reminds him that she doesn't have any SAO memories to lose anyway. She's a GGO girl. During the boss battle, someone is taken out, and a drone swoops in and scoops up the glowing orange sphere that is their extracted memories. Yui sees it and jets off after it into the drone, but before she can discover anything, she's locked out by a firewall. After the battle, Kirito sees the mysterious girl hooded in white again. He is pissed. She doesn't respond to his questions, she just pops up out of nowhere, points, and disappears. Sinon notices his frustration and asks him what's going on. At last, Kirito puts it together that all the pointing was, in fact, communication, and asks Yui to sort out what she was pointing at from each location that she appeared. Bam! All the pointing intersects at the Toto Institute of Technology, where the Agma's creator, Tetsuhiro Shigemura, is a professor. Kirito attends one of his lectures, and afterwards, in his office, accuses him of being behind the memory thefts. Shigemura feigns ignorance and tries to spin losing SAO memories as a good thing for the survivors. On his way out, Kirito notices a picture on his desk that looks exactly like Yuna, the AI idol. He realizes that she is Shigemura's daughter, who died in the SAO incident. Kirito visits Asuna at her place. Alone in her room, he finds her diary and, without hesitation, completely invades her privacy. He discovers that she doesn't remember his promise to take her camping. She catches him reading it, but doesn't mind, and even invites him to read it all. Elsewhere, Yuna is excited about her upcoming stadium concert. She asks Eiji to read more of the SAO book to her, specifically about him. But he's embarrassed to say he's not even mentioned in it, at all. He admits that he was weak and cowardly in SAO, hence his current overcompensation in AR. Meanwhile, Kirito walks home and gets ambushed by the hooded ghost girl, who turns out to be another version of Yuna. She transports him to a virtual space that resembles Ankrad. He starts questioning her, but she just breaks into song. He wants to know what he needs to do to get Asuna's memories back, and the only somewhat useful thing that Ghost Yuna says is that he's not strong enough to do that yet. She then tells him to wake up and snaps her fingers, sending him back to reality. He comes to, in a bush, with a cop standing over him, who doesn't even get his name or question him at all. Apparently, it's a normal enough thing for kids to be waking up in the bushes. Kirito continues his quest for answers and hits up every boss battle he can, fighting recklessly, risking his memories, but leveling up like the dickens. Eiji finally shows up, and Kirito tries to fight him, but he can't match his speed and strength since Eiji is using elite hacks. The night of the concert, the gang finds their seats and wonders where Kirito is. He's in the parking garage, about to face off with Eiji again. He calls him by his SAO name, Nautilus, and he gets butthurt and whines that his name is Eiji now. Instead of dealing with the very real problem of people's memories being erased, they decide to settle things by LARPing in ordinal scale. Meanwhile, Shigemura watches the concert from his lab and talks to himself, or to Kaiba's Force Ghost? Or maybe it's his fantasy of Kaiba's Force Ghost ego stroking his plan to revive Yuna using SAO Survivor's memories. Eiji tells Kirito that he loved Yuna in SAO, and that he wants to bring her back to life, and reveals that he's working with Shigemura to collect SAO memories for Yuna's revival project. Now that Kirito has some idea of what's going on, he disables Eiji's OP hack device, wrecks him, and goes to join his friends. Then, Shigemura tells Eiji that he'll be using his memories of Yuna as well, since he has the most data on her, a predictable betrayal. The same boss he sicked on Silica appears and attacks Eiji, who doesn't take off his Agma because, because, well, the plot requires that he doesn't. Shigemura waits to steal the memories of everyone at the concert, causing panic as monsters fill the stadium after Yuna finishes a single song. 
Some of the audience think it's a special event, a part of the show, and start fighting. Hooded Ghost Yuna confronts her father and tries to stop him, but he says it's too late. He's come too close to stop now. Her father's a lost cause, so she zips down to Kirito and fills him in. He tries to get people to remove their Ogma devices, but that would be way too easy. Yuna tells him that they need to use the Ogma's hidden full dive capabilities to dive into Aincrad and defeat the 100th floor boss, because that will stop Shigemoto's plan, somehow. He agrees and leaves Asuna to watch over their unconscious bodies. Kirito and the others full dive into Aincrad and face the boss, but they are overwhelmed by its power. Asuna, despite not remembering anything from SAO, seems to intuitively understand that nothing properly gets done without her involvement. She and Yui gather their friends from ALO to join the fight, and they transfer their old gear and skills from SAO, giving them an advantage. They manage to defeat the boss with pure, unadulterated friendship, and clear SAO for real-ish, ignoring like 24 other bosses. Kirito receives the strongest sword in the game as a reward, and everyone else gets nothing but the friends they made along the way. They return to the stadium, having stopped Shigemoto's plan. Kikuoka finds the professor in his lab and arrests him. The gang meets in Egil's bar, while Kirito and Asuna go on their camping trip. He finally proposes to her, in the real, and a meteor shower lights up the night sky. Thank you for sticking until the end. Subscribe for more videos like this.